My name is Vitaly Permikov. Uh, I'm instructor in uh, uh, of liturgical theology and comparative theology and also dogmatics at Holy Trinity Orthodox Seminary in uh, Jordanville, New York. And I came here uh, with uh, being uh, through a kind invitation of uh, Father Victor and uh, this parish to give a lecture on the structure and meaning of um, uh, all night vigil of the service called all night vigil in uh, orthodox tradition because i think it's important for an orthodox christian to understand uh, to understand the services to understand the meaning of the services and and to come to the church not only to be engaged in his private prayer but being attentive to um, the scripture readings to the readings uh, of uh, uh, to, to the to the hymnography and uh, uh, to the uh, and and to the way in which the service uh, opens uh, discloses through the texts and uh, th it's uh, the mystery of Christ you will not get anywhere in the studies if you don't study texts so uh, if you don't don't study you don't study texts you don't compare analyze translate if necessary, and uh, especially uh, what, uh, you need, what one needs to acquire uh, one, once does liturgical studies is an awareness of the historical aspect of our tradition. Um, our, uh, uh, lit uh, that's fine. Um, our liturgy, and this is actually, actually good because um, showing the Church of the Holy Sepulchre here because our tradition develops in a specific place and specific time. And of course, uh, you cannot come into uh, two Orthodox churches and find liturgy and vigil and other services celebrated in exactly the same way. We're not robots. We are human beings, so we are we do uh, we celebrate things uh, slightly differently. But even in in the before appearance of printing of books, you probably would not have found two monasteries who celebrated liturgy exactly the same fashion. Uh, all the most the typicon the, uh, the the book which uh, regulates our uh, our worship. Um, but itself needs interpretation. It, it is it, not uh, in two different monasteries. You would find two different ways of celebrating. The same applies for local traditions in the Church of the Holy Anastasis in Jerusalem, in the Church uh, in um, in the Church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. Uh, in the, uh, they would celebrate uh, liturgy. Uh, they would celebrate divine offices in a slightly different fashion. And of course, they would celebrate uh, uh, different liturgies in Constantinople. They would celebrate the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom and St. Basil the Great. In Jerusalem, they would celebrate the liturgy of St. James. Uh, in Alexandria, they would celebrate the liturgy of St. Mark, and so forth. Uh, but So in this way, when you look at the development of the liturgy, um, uh, I mean, you, will see, you, might, you, you see that liturgy is not Liturgy itself, the liturgical text, is not changeless. It has a history, it has a historical development. But at the same time, what is changeless is what the liturgy is about. Liturgy is about the praise and worship to the changeless God. The God who is without alternate alteration or change. And uh, moreover, liturgy is about um, communicating through uh, the um, and, uh, through the words of liturgical texts, through uh, images, through uh, uh, hymns, through liturgical actions, insensation, entrances, processions, um, through buildings, uh, through the church architecture, um, trying to uh, to the best of our abilities to express the changeless uh, rule of faith, the changeless gospel about Christ crucified and risen, crucified uh, and, and, and preach uh, uh, and proclaim the uh, good tidings regarding his 
uh, he is uh, uh, he, the salvation of uh, of human race, which has been accomplished through Christ. In our uh, in the center point uh, in our divine liturgy, at the point which usually draws uh, um, more um, the most attention when we uh, the transfer when uh, we transfer the gifts from a uh, table of oblation to the altar and the song that the accompanying hymn uh, likens us the participants to the cherubim we are, um, we are we are uh, it's more of it says that we represent or literally be we icons on this we are becoming icons of the angelic powers with whom we are joined in singing the thrice holy hymn. As we know, thrice holy hymn, Isaiah 6. That's the, what's revealed to what was revealed the vision which Isaiah has in the temple. And where he says that's what the angelic hymns uh, sing, holy, holy, holy. Um, and um, and uh, we, uh, having become sort of icons of um, of angelic powers, we are because, why? Because we are uh, doing what is the appropriate, uh, let's say, work of the angels. It's which is a praise, unceasingly praise and worship God. Only we are human beings, so we do it in our limited time and our limited manner. And whenever we do, whether we celebrate, we would celebrate all night vigil for two hours, uh, or, or we celebrate it. In, uh, throughout the whole night, as it was, um, as it was probably the orig originally done, um, we still uh, celebrate it in time. In we're still kind of limited human beings, but um, we are becoming uh, we which we, we um, in trying to become um, icons of the angelic powers, so that we would uh, uh, we would we join in, in, in with angels in praising the one one true God. This uh, time I will, however, um, focus on um, another service, not on Divine Liturgy, but on uh, the service which we celebrate every Saturday night and on the eve of every feast day, the service uh, called in our books uh, All Night Vigil. Uh, all, uh, uh, the name itself implies uh, that this is a celebration which, uh, con which is intended to continue throughout all night. We, it has to begin according to our to Tipicon, according to our liturgical, uh, the criterion of our liturgical worship, the uh, book which we turn to for when we, wa when we want to find out how different, how the services uh, of diff appointed for a certain day, how are they to be combined together? Um, uh, it, it has to, according to Tipicon, uh, it has to begin somewhat later after after sunset. But the parts of the uh, 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 other parts of the liturgy um, uh, of, of the vigil contain uh, refer to different. Um, times during the, the of the day so there is a uh, middle uh, in, at the beginning of mountains we chant the six psalms six psalms include uh, the words uh, um, uh, um, uh, Bože, Bože, o god my god at the, at the dawn uh, um, uh, 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 i rise early towards thee and the word those of the greek word or phrase indicates certain time of the, of the day the early dawn the or other kind of transition between dawn between night and dawn and dawn uh, we uh, conclude our uh, all night vigil with the service of the first hour and first hour of course it's the first hour it's uh, as was the third and th uh, and uh, six and ninth it refers to a first hour after sunrise so it refers to the way of calculating the hours of the day where you begin when you have sunrise as a starting point and in uh, this um, in late antiquity 
um, uh, they would, this was a times of the day, like such as third and sixth and ninth hour, were uh, marked uh, publicly by um, uh, by announcing uh, by announce, uh, announce by public announcements, so people would know when this uh, when third and sixth and ninth hour they they wouldn't have uh, wouldn't be confused about it. And so this is naturally be, could become a time when uh, a Christian could pray, uh, could, could use it for prayer at certain appointed hours. Uh, the, first hour, the first hour is the first, um, first hour of the day. Um, there is a uh, probably corresponding service first hour of the night, and that is what we call Compline. I mean, Compline originally, at least a part of the Compline, is the is the is the service which is the first hour, which is probably the celebration of first hour of the night. So, as we have a several hours of the day marked as with with prayer, so historically you have a practice of marking with prayer certain hours of the night, and um, there are um, liturgical bo books of hours, liturgical books. Which uh, um, which are not in current current use, but which, which have preserved been preserved in manuscripts, which have service for every hour of the day. Only some of them would be celebrated by uh, with uh, with the people. Some of them would be probably celebrated by ascetics, by monks. But every but this is an expression through the liturgy, through the liturgical uh, rite the uh, uh, perception that we need to pray unceasingly. Uh, we need to, and how do you pray unceasingly? Either, I mean, there are, and there are, tradition has different answers for this, to this question. So uh, one way is to have a really long services. Um, and, and another way to sell it to have many services. So you have short services, but you have them, you have uh, every hour you pray, you have a short, short prayer service. Or, I mean, um, uh, ascetical, uh, as monastic tradition uh, gave, gave it yet another answer to this, as you probably are uh, familiar with, uh, is uh, praying, uh, constantly praying a certain short prayer, a monologic prayer, um, such as Jesus' prayer. Um, uh, as uh, I already said, uh, the service of all night vigil contains is the um, combines the celebration of great vespers, um, as solemn vesper, uh, festal vespers, festive vespers, which includes entrance, um, which is usually the mark of, sol of solemnity of certain uh, um, of, of, of a solemn celebration. On feast days, not usually on Sundays, or well, meaning Saturday night, not usually on the eve of Sundays, but uh, you have a, a serve, you have a liti procession or litia, as we call it. Um, liti means procession, kind of usually signify term signifying procession. Um, and at the um, and at the uh, uh, end of Vespers, you have the blessing, it's the rite of artoplasia, or breaking of bread, and you have, this is the uh, blessing of uh, five loaves and uh, wheat wine and oil, which are then later are distributed uh, to the people. Um, so this solemn celebration of Vespers, which um, um, you have Liti and Artoclasia usually in parishes and even in Jordan Hill, I should say. They are done only on, on feast days. Um, but uh, uh, according to the Tipicon, they have to be done every Saturday night. So you have to do Liti. Uh, uh, and there is a certain, there is a specific reason for this. The, uh, why would you. Uh, and um, uh, right now, for which, uh, when we receive a um, portion of the Blessed Bread, um, it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not uh, we don't perceive it as sustenance, but uh, it's probably its original intention was, it was sustenance, was to uh, sh uh, sharing of the, um, uh, uh, of the uh, sharing of the, uh, of the blessed bread, um, so that you would, um, uh, you, you would re receive certain physical sustenance during vigil. 
Um, and as already said, uh, uh, to this you combine uh, to add festal matins uh, on Saturday night, resurrection matins uh, on Sunday morning, uh, on Sunday, uh, on Saturday night you will have uh, on, on even feast days you will have a festal matins which marked by reading of the gospel, specific gospel passage, festive uh, or resurrectional, um, and singing of the great axology. So, um, but. Of course, by definition, the term Bdenia or Agrippnia, Panichis is another term, although in tradition it's Panichis, uh, or where comes out of the word term Panichida for a memorial service, um, refers to as it's a specific service uh, which was done in the monasteries uh, of uh, student tradition at the end of uh, after Vespers. But so it's not really. Panichida um, uh, and all night vigil are not really connected. They they have uh, an, uh, 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 all night vigil, which we know also all night vigil. Is they are not. Uh, there is no genetic connection there. But I mean, there is uh, some. Uh, um, but in um, uh, all night vigil is a celebration of solemn celebration of vespers plus matins plus first hour. And on some three, ta three times a year, it's uh, is Vespers is replaced, is celebrated earlier, and it's replaced by uh, a great compliment. So it's the eve of uh, Christmas, uh, Nativity, eve of Theophany, and eve of Nan Annunciation, if it falls on weekday. Um, uh, historically, um, it seems that Old Testament does not seem to know regular prayer during the night, although it mentions it. Uh, but early Christians apparently did, and we have numerous admonishments in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to be vigilant. And uh, uh, Jesus uh, Christ, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, shown in uh, the Gospels praying during the night several times. Um, most importantly, on the eve of his crucifixion. Um, and uh, uh, Saint Paul uh, in, uh, uh, is described as um, presiding at the uh, night nocturnal Eucharistic assembly, which appears, uh, and uh, during which uh, there is on this occasion where the uh, young Eutychus, a young man falling out, falling out of the window, whom he rises, raises from the dead. Uh, but context for this is, is a breaking of bread with the community. Uh, it's just St. Paul's sermon was um, very long, and so the, the young man fell, fell asleep and fell out of the window. And um, uh, as a result, uh, uh, but the context for this is a nocturnal assembly. Um, uh, we uh, um, have probably an indication throughout the third century of Christians celebrating having a vigil at the night of Pascha, on the eve of Pascha, that when they would uh, uh, gather in prayer until the uh, cockerel, so it would be around uh, 3 a.m., at which point they would break their fast with the Eucharist. So their celebration, uh, they would, but uh, there is a, when you read this passage in the Didascale Apostolorum, it is a third century Syriac document, um, uh, and um, you have a certain feeling that what, when, the reason that the Christians gather together in, ex in praying during night on the Pascha is eschatological. There is still kind of eschatological expectation. Uh, so that we, when you don't have the Lord doesn't come, uh, in, uh, in the second coming of Lord does not happen during this night, well, you would celeb you celebrate the Eucharist. If it doesn't happen, you celebrate the Eucharist. But, so you have, you, the Lord comes, still comes, as, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, um, the eschaton has not occurred yet. There are other occasions in the Acts of Thomas, you have a description, the apocryphal third century uh, Syriac Acts, you have a description of all night a vigil which uh, includes baptism, which refers where a person is baptized at the dawn, they have they break bread and celebrate the Eucharist. Um, in the, uh, uh, well, I mean, then, then this picture becomes um, relevant because around the 80s, a uh, certain Spanish as a nun called the Girian, uh, visits holy places um, in the in the in Palestine and elsewhere, and uh, 
she leaves a description what did they do on Saturday, on a Saturday night in Jerusalem around year uh, 318. Um, what they did, uh, they gathered near the um, uh, place uh, of the Lord's tomb, which they called Holy Anastasis, Chapel of the Holy Resurrection, and they uh, wait for the, waited for the bishop to come, and uh, um, they uh, sang three, uh, they, op they um, uh, offered a lot of incense, uh, and uh, they, uh, they sang three psalms, and, uh, 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 and the bishop would read the account of the Passion and Resurrection from the Gospel, during which there would be a lot of, a lot of lamentation and groaning from the people, as she describes. And then they would go to the cross uh, and sing one psalm in prayer and receive dismissal. So uh, you have what you, the fourth century building is the one which is down below, which is, which you see here. And uh, the, uh, in the uh, upper two images, this is how the entrance to the uh, Holy Sepulchre looks right now, of course, as you know that. And, uh, the, uh, and that's how the Church of the Holy Sepulchre looks, uh, looks right now. But the only parts which are remained from that original building right now is the place for uh, where the tomb of the, Lo of the Lord's tomb and the, uh, the place of Golgotha. Everything else was rebuilt. This, the entire, this entire complex was destroyed completely in 2009, or 1009, sorry, about 1000 years ago. Uh, and when it was restored, it was it uh, looked completely uh, restored in completely different style by uh, crusaders. So um, it is, uh, but in the fourth century, I mean, it was still kind of uh, it was there was a basilica, and uh, there was an open courtyard between the uh, basilica and uh, the place where of the Lord's tomb. This is this rotunda building. And they would celebrate uh, on, on, on a Saturday night. They would gather for the celebration at the near the Lord's tomb, and they read the account of the Passion and the Resurrection. And uh, 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 after that, they would go to the to the cross. So that would be uh, um, that order, uh, uh, and where, which is still kind of there's still how uh, this is still where where the goal of that is. Um, and uh, these elements of the service, and major elements of the service, uh, actually uh, primarily the gospel, uh, still uh, remains kind of essential for the, the, the focal point of our celebration, of our weekly celebration of uh, Christ's, uh, Christ's Pascha, his burial, his death, burial, and resurrection. And you look at liturgical text, it's always um, always uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Uh, you, you look, uh, we celebrate, because uh, we celebrate the Paschal mystery, uh, not uh, dividing it between three days, although on Friday we do commemorate the cross, and on Wednesdays, Friday, we commemorate the cross. On, on, fr on Fridays we commemorate the cross, sorry. Um, and we, um, uh, but on Sunday, on Saturday night, this, when we celebrate the Lord's Pascha, we, we, kind of, we kind of call it small Pascha, but we commemorate Christ's resurrection, we also commemorate his crucifixion and his burial. Uh, this is a joint, for us it's, a, you, it's, a, it's one celebration. And so it was already in the 4th century, uh, you hear the, uh, that you, they read the account, not on the account of uh, Jesus' post-resurrectional appearances, not only of Jesus' resurrection, but they had the account of also of his passion. Um, it is in, in the uh, moving forward in the early seventh century. Uh, uh, two monks, uh, John and Sophronius, uh, probably John Moscus, also known as John Moscus, and future patriarch of Sophronius of Jerusalem, visit Abba uh, Nilos of Sinai and leave the for us description of a vigil which he celebrated with his disciples, uh, which went through all, all night. And the vigil, that vigil was basically, again, it was a combination of vespers and matins, but um, to, in order to, to, to have it last throughout the night, uh, about Neos of Sinai pretty much, re they read the entire Psalter during that night. 
um, and we uh, also read entire books of the scripture of the scriptures, but which um, pro probably will easily take you throughout the, throughout the entire night. Uh, but what Abanilis of Sinai did not do, uh, and they were they were surprised those two monks because they come uh, those two monks they derive from. Uh, they have the experience which they have was the experience of the church of Polyanasis in Jerusalem and also experience of, of St. Saba's monastery, which is, uh, you can, uh, the next slide, St. Saba's monastery. Um, uh, Laura of uh, St. Saba's the Sanctified, founded uh, according to tradition uh, 4th AD 3, uh, end of 5th century. Um, and uh, they ask Abanilas, why do uh, why during services you don't sing any traparium, which meant that they do uh, they, they did the psalms, this uh, but the kind of uh, uh, Lord I call uh, Psalm Psalm one forty uh, they did six psalms they did the praises psalms but they didn't do didn't do anything of what we call stihira, and he said uh, well I mean only people who are ordained. Who are ordained, who are uh, set, uh, appointed for the service of the church, should do that. Should do this or these parts of the services, since uh, since we none of us are, and it was tradition among monks not to get ordained actually for many centuries, um, to because to avoid the questions of um, rank and pride and among and among them, and uh, so therefore we don't uh, we, we we don't sing them. Um, it, which shows um, also that there was a, from the early point, there was a, when the monastery of St. Sabas emerged, uh, uh, and St. Sabas' uh, usage was trying, was uh, close to the one which they used, in, to the practices which they used in uh, Hol at Holy Anastasis uh, Monastery, uh, Holy Anastasis Church in Jerusalem. Um, that they sang, they had a, the same, uh, the structure of, of the vigil was of Vespers and Matins were probably similar. Um, basically, the major parts were, were, were the same, um, and, but they, they already added a poetic traparia, added poetic hymns to this, uh, to this services. And uh, so, moving forward, uh, precisely this arrangement of uh, the um, of the situated the context of the monastery of St. Sabas, which is a lavra, which is a uh, lavra, which means it's a it's a uh, lavra type of a monastery is the one when you have several cells, uh, um, and uh, you uh, the um, uh, where monks have a, their separate dwellings, but they come together for the Saturday and Sunday services. And uh, uh, and so uh, in this uh, situation, um, it is quite understandable that uh, why there was a need for all night vigil, for kind of practical need for all night vigil throughout uh, the night from Saturday to Sunday, because uh, if you finish really late, it will be probably dangerous to go back to your cell during the night, and then trying to come back in the morning for 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 matins and. Uh, uh, for for mat matins and liturgy, so you would celebrate throughout throughout the night. Moreover, what we know as the Liti procession, or the Liti procession, also originates probably from St. Sabas Monastery, and the the way it is originates, it's it, it used to be originated a procession throughout uh, the entire monastery complex, visiting several uh, churches along the way, and uh, also. Uh, on the way, stopping at the bakery uh, and blessing the uh, blessing the bread and and the, the wine to give uh, give monks uh, sustenance yeah. during the vigil. Also, there was another reason why would they and it's one of the typical. It says why are they distributed uh, given bread and bread and uh, this blessed bread and wine during the during vigil. Uh, uh, so that they could uh, they could have some sustenance, but from that point on they would fast uh, for uh, would their Eucharistic fast would begin. They would begin to fast until the Holy Communion. They would not eat anything from that point on. Um, in the later tradition, of course, uh, tradition which we uh, know as um, kind of neo, what's called neo monasteries, which were. 
um, uh, under uh, and the the uh, vigil uh, the litia becomes a more or less symbolic procession just into the back of the church or uh, in the narthex. Um, and the blessing of bread no longer uh, had a significance, has a significance of being a sustenance. It is a blessing of bread for, uh, um, it is a symbolic, it is a, it's a, blessing of a blessing of bread, which in the typical it says that they are, it would, they are beneficial for your health and since they are blessed, but still it doesn't, it's not, it's not your supper anymore. Um, uh, in uh, the way uh, liturgical services are, are in all night vigil developed from that point, from uh, from that point on, is that in the um, uh, eighth ninth century, uh, if you had a um, well. If there were a map, I would show it on a map. But um, you, there was a, a monastery. Near, uh, uh, near um, uh, in, in Asia Minor, near Mount Olympus, and it was not the Mount Olympus which was in Greece, but Mount Olympus which is in, in Asia Minor. It's not that far from Constantinople. On this, on the map, it shows that. Uh, and in that monastery, they, for the first, uh, they, for, probably for the first time, they tried to the uh, the tradition which uh, of for. Um, the tradition of that monastery was probably was Palestinian, but for uh, the uh, priestly, sir, priestly parts of the service, they used the liturgical books of the uh, of, of the Church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, uh, and thus uh, um, the abbot of that monastery, Saint Plato of Sakudian, he, he was the uncle of Saint Theodore the Studite. St. Theodore the Studite in the early 9th century, he uh, and his monks uh, went into Constantinople and occupied the, uh, um, at that point, uh, empty monastery of St. John, uh, John of Studio. It is on, uh, in Constantinople. And in this, uh, in this monastery, it, they create the services which they created, uh, which combine Palestinian uh, practices uh, for offices, for uh, for for matins, vespers, hours, etc., with uh, mm, uh, with the uh, practices of the Church of the Holy Wisdom for um, uh, for divine liturgy and prayers and litanies accompanying uh, daily ser services of vespers and matins, and that has been our 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 characteristic of our services from that point on and up until today, what we call Byzantine synthesis. What do we synthesize? We synthesize the monastic tradition of from Palestine with the tradition of a cathedral service in in Constantinople. So we still largely use the books uh, of uh, Hagia Sophia for uh, liturgy and for the prayers of the liturgy, and we still when it's used Chasoslov, the Book of Hours, it is Palestinian by origin. There has been some contamination, of course, but. And, uh, the Studite tradition then in the um, uh, 11th, 12th century influenced the appearance, the, the emergence uh, of a sort of a st second stage of the development of Palestinian liturgy. It is, um, uh, which is called kind of neo sabbat or Jerusalem Typicon, which this, from this point on, Jerusalem Typicon is basically our Typicon as we know it. Um, uh, and uh, so it was. Uh, it was a period of kind of going back and forth. That's the studium. That's the on the left. Uh, on the right is what's left of it, and on the left that's its reconstruction. Kind of. um, and so it's so back and forth between Palestine and Constantinople. Pal uh, so from Palestine to Constantinople, from Constantinople, and and then from uh, Constantinople back to Pal back to Palestine, and uh, and then to Mount Athos and then into our liturgical books, you know, to our typical. So this is an example. Uh, everybody knows that during, uh, at the beginning of Vespers, uh, during the psalm which we call opening psalm, Psalm 103, and during the six psalms, the priest reads a series of prayers 
of uh, even the Vespers, here is seven prayers, uh, on the Matins, here is twelve prayers. Uh, here is them one by one, uh, without, uh, and uh, silently. Um, but, uh, so these prayers originate from the service, uh, from, the, from the Vespers and Matins, which was celebrated in the Church of Holy Wisdom in Constantinople. Um, would you uh, go back, and not, uh, go for, yeah, that, that, that one, that one. <laughs> um, uh, and, um, uh, and in the Church of the Holy Wisdom, their services of Vespers and Matins were completely different from, our, from, from what we know as, I mean, uh, f from, from, what, from what we know as Vespers and Matins. Um, was it just different, right? There were some common elements. Psalm 140, Lord, I call it Vespers. Uh, uh, Psalm 50, Psalm 62, some uh, Psalm, uh, uh, Psalms of Praises and Doxology during Matins. Uh, and um, uh, uh, these are more common elements, but they are common among almost all Christian traditions. But in the structure of the services, the way you divide the Psalter, the way you sing, litany, the way you place litanies and prayers, that was different. So this seven, 7 and 12, which the priest reads during, uh, silently, they were supposed to go after uh, an every, uh, uh, every, every antiphon or psalter during, this, uh, during Vespers and during Matins. It was a series of uh, up to eight antiphons, which were, which were uh, variable. And uh, therefore, um, uh, once the students uh, started uh, using the book of the uh, of the uh, of Constantinopolitan uh, liturgical books, priestly uh, služebnik, uh, and basically the priest service book, they, this thing, oh, yeah, let's try to fit those prayers and litanies into the structure of the Palestinian services. But of course, they didn't. It was difficult to do since they didn't read the prayers. There were no uh, the, uh, no prayers. Uh, I mean, if there were any prayers, they were different, and we don't know what they are in, in the Palestinian services. And they tried to fit those prayers in, into the this, into this structure. Um, well, the litanies it worked with prayers that didn't, didn't work. So at the end, they, they, start, uh, they started simply just practically just reading them all in the beginning of the services. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, because uh, it would be too difficult to, 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 to distribute them. Um, although there were there were there were several <clears throat> so several attempts. So the structure of our services is uh, is uh, the the prayers and litanies are from that church. The structure of the the, the uh, psalms, uh, hymns, uh, uh, and uh, are from the structure of the very structure of the service of vespers and matins are from the church of uh, of Franz and Sabas and originally probably from the church uh, of Holy Anastasis. Uh, we, uh, it's also important to remember uh, that this, uh, our, the feature of this service, uh, services um, are that combination of several elements. Um, it also uh, uh, kind of applies even to the uh, uh, to the Palestinian services themselves. Specifically, I'm thinking of the service of Matins. And um, I would again ask you to, to, to go forward, but se several slides. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, no? Yeah, well, I mean, um, for fur further, further on, yes. So that's structure of Vespers. Um, uh, and that st structure of Matins, I think it's next. Next slide. Uh, the, uh, fortunately, we have now we have an info, we have a source which was recently uh, edited, but it's not published yet. But uh, which shows which is uh, an old uh, uh, orologion, old Jesus law from Saint Sabas, and what it has, why is it interesting, is that it clearly shows that the part of what we know as matins is a night service. And the part of the no, one, no, as, as, the second part of the Noah's Matins is a mooring service. Uh, and simply, uh, originally they were services of the 6th hour of the night and the 12th hour of the night. So 6th hour of the night, sort of night office, okay, midnight office or nocturnes, call, call it, which had six psalms and Alleluia, and uh, which we, you know, you come service to Matins during Lent, you know that Alleluia, you don't sing God, God is the Lord, but you sing Alleluia. 
and not used to be uh, a practice for um, uh, any day in, in the Typicon which does not have a special commemoration. And uh, since today, pretty much, you do not have any day which does not have a commemoration. Uh, you, every day you have, a, you, have a, you have lots of saints every day. And so uh, it's pretty much it develops like this so that uh, every day you have um, uh, God is the Lord. You, every day you can chant God is the Lord, except during uh, Lenten period. Uh, in Lenten period, in Lent, you, keep, you try to keep to older practices, you try to, keep, to preserve more ancient la layer of tradition, and you try to, um, and that's why you, you still chant in Lent, at Matins you still chant Alleluia. Um, and so this is kind of, ma our Matin service is up until 8th century, this is, was this kind of uh, combination of night service and morning service. And uh, it's also included, the morning service included uh, uh, Psalm 50, nine biblical oaths with Traparia, praises with Traparia, and doxology. Uh, 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 and I mean, then kind of you wrap, wrap up the service essentially. Um, and it's also kind of another common feature, another feature of our services is that all of the, our, why do we give, you see this in the case of Traparia? But, uh, it was the original, <clears throat> the original practice was that um, biblical text, uh, which is used in the services, it had, it, it had uh, this kind of in Palestinian tradition, uh, it had attached to it several traparia, what we you know we call them stichira, but I mean, they also can call, be called trapari, trapari. I mean, it's, it's a similar, uh, um, basically, but, uh, um, but um, uh, w why? But, but the idea is basically the structure is basically exegetical, interpretative, that we use a liturgical text, we, we use a biblical text, and then we compose a series of hymns to uh, try to con make a connection between these texts and a uh, biblical text and our context, uh, this, uh, our feast day, our uh, the day of the week, uh, our cele particular celebration. Um, so um, uh, we uh, constantly are engaged in this in interpretation of a, of a scriptural text with the help of the poetry. And that's how originally, uh, that's the origins of Stihira on uh, Lord I Call. Uh, the, uh, that's the origin of Stichiron praises, that's the origin of Stich of the canon. Because originally you had a series, every biblical ode, I mean, uh, every biblical ode had, for a certain occasion, you had a written, uh, uh, had a, a series of traparia connecting it with a particular feast day, um, and, uh, uh, or a particular occasion, or just penitential. But uh, every, uh, uh, but it, uh, when you had appear the appearance of the uh, great hymnographers such as St. Andrew of Crete and St. John of Damascus, they started to compose a uh, kind of superstructures sort of, of made of trapari. They, they, they started to compose a canon made of um, many trapari which had a kind of, which was a unified composition, not just a series of, of uh, disparate, uh, d d d series of discrete trapari. Um, and uh, uh, that's also, uh, if you can scroll back a bit, um, yeah, to uh, back, back, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so another thing is uh, that the Psalms, or all the, all the biblical texts, they were sung with refrains, and we still do sing them with refrains. Uh, at least for the first two two verses, um, and so the Lord sounds of Lord they call. We sing them. That's you. You, you don't hear it very well uh, when you when you see, because you sing them like uh, you you sing them all together. But uh, it, these are what is uh, italicized here. These are the refrains. So the refrains for uh, for Psalms um, Psalm 140 at Vespers is "Hear me, O Lord." And because that's not a part of biblical text, that's the refrain. The same with the uh, uh, with the psalms at uh, praises at matins, 
so uh, to these you praise our God is not part of biblical text. That's the, that's the, that's the refrain. So you would sing a refrain throughout those, those psalms. And uh, particularly, I mean, another remnant of that practice uh, is actually the words, Glory to thee who has shown us the light. These were the, also the refrain on praises. This was the last refrain for, for, pra- for the sound of praises. And uh, um, uh, so you would sing, uh, which kind of, it's kind of a, um, shows a certain uh, attitude towards the kind of the cold, uh, um, uh, wholesomeness of a biblical text. That you sing it without, but you don't add yet anything to it, but you, you don't interpret it while you're singing it. So you, you sang it, then you sing the, uh, the chop- uh, and then you sing the series of trapai. Um, later practices, what they tended to do is uh, to uh, omit the biblical text or to try to. I mean, I think that's what started eventually. That started they started to uh, get rid of biblical text altogether, as we very often do. I mean, we tend to do kind of with, um, uh, well, sometimes in, in the Russian church they would just sing those two re- first two verses and skip the rest up until sti- until we get to the stihira. Um, and Greek churches, I mean, do, do that as well. And so, to prevent from that happening to the biblical text, you started to mix the this uh, stihira with the with the verses of the psalms. I mean, it's, and there is no, you, you, there is no kind of really clear connection between the, between the verse of the psalm and actually the sihira. But I mean, the, it was just done to inter, they were interconnected uh, so that they would, you would we wouldn't lose biblical text altogether. And uh, also uh, another example, interesting example, at matins uh, before the gospel, you sing the hymns called hymns of the ascent, hymns of the degrees. Uh, or Anna with me, or Stibiani, uh, you sing that there are different, um, uh, there are three for e- each tone uh, of the, for, for each uh, of the eight tones, and the three of them, uh, and four for for uh, eighth tone, except for the additional one. And uh, if we, we usually sing a very, very, well, I mean, we, we, we sometimes don't, Maybe even not, not 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 notice them because I mean it's a bit they're a bit complicated. I mean the the, the Greek is a bit complicated. Uh, but if you uh, look at those texts and put side by side the psalms of the ascent, you see that what the original purpose was they to be refrains for the psalms of the ascent. What are the psalms of the ascent? The eighteenth confusion psalms uh, from uh, from Psalm one one nineteen on. Um, these are uh, uh, 119, 132, 132. These are sounds of the uh, sounds of uh, sounds of the ascent. That's, uh, these are sounds which the pious Jews used to say while ascending to the temple of Jer- in Jerusalem. While ascending every step, they would sing. A, they would say a psalm. Um, and that's uh, kind of uh, that's the that, that's, that's how they were used. I mean, we still we we use them. We use the sounds of the ascent, but. Uh, but we use only now. Nowadays, we use all, we don't. Although in the manuscripts you have verses, some verses with refrains. Uh, now we, we don't have we don't uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, use that. I mean, an, another uh, well uh, <clears throat> example of the this variety of the tradition of this uh, synthesis which happened is that we in our Orthodox when we celebrate Martins, we have two ways of doing the exology. One is when we sing it, another when we read it. And if you look at them, you would see that, uh, well, one, they are not really really the same text, only their parts are going to be uh, uh, rearranged a bit. <coughs> um, but it begins with the same angelic hymn, Glory to God in the Highest. And then you have this also in Latin tradition, when it's used for the beginning of the liturgy. But, um, uh, but uh, this rearrangement, and in, in the, also in the, uh, when you sing the exology, you end it with trisagia. But this rearrangement, the, or, the, the reason for that is, is the sung doxology is from Constantinople, and the uh, red doxology is from, from, from Palestine. And there's just, just two, uh, the two texts which are, com- which are very similar, which are, but they are from coming from two different places. Because in Constantinople at Matins, when you sing the uh, great axology, and after deciding, you will make an entrance in your read the resurrection gospel at that point. Um, so uh, it uh, really shows that this is 
uh, that how uh, kind of interwoven those uh, kind of local influences are and how, how they are deeply kind of deeply connected. And um, but everything in the in the church, um, I mean, I could cite more 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 example of this. Um, but everything in the church is um, so. Whenever everything in, in the right of the divine vision, uh, as everything in the church has a reason for the for 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 existence, it has a reason, historical reason, and has a theological reason. That uh, St. Simeon of Thessaloniki says that the church is the work of the hypostatic wisdom, and therefore every detail in it, even, even minor detail, is, uh, is full of wisdom. Uh, we uh, often uh, tend to, especially our liturgical scholars, tend to focus, just stay on the level, on the literal level, on the historical level, but uh, we forget very often that the meaning, the significance of the services is uh, Christological. Uh, and that's interpretation, a good, great example of that is our use of the, um, uh, the central hymn, hymn of the Vespers uh, is, uh, um, could you scroll back to a bit? No, forward. Yeah. So it's the hymn of at, uh, at Vespers, uh, which is uh, glorifies Christ as the light of the glory of the immortal Father. Um, uh, and uh, it, but what is the, the 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 point of the why the light is mentioned all the time at Vespers? Uh, there is a practical reason. I mean, and one uh, one proper name in our tradition for vespers is lighting of the lamp, is lichnikon, lamp lighting. So you see, kind of uh, the Sunday priestly prayers are so-called lamp lighting prayers, but they are prayers, they are vesperal prayers, uh, because it was important for in the, in the time when you don't have electricity, when we just we just what we just now do, we just store and turn the switch on. Uh, at that point, uh, at the late antiquity, to have a, uh, a light. It, is imp it was important, and so the bringing of the of the new light into the uh, in, into darkness, into the dark darkened room, it was an important domestic rite. Uh, in, it was also practiced in the in the Jerusalem temple when you had every day the lighting of the uh, of, of the of the lamps, and that probably also the origin of our another one of the origins of our vespers probably. Um, but what you what you do here uh, is how the Christian tradition interpreted it is because it, because for Christians Christ is the light of the world, uh, and uh, Christ is at the so uh, the the new light brought into the uh, con congregation uh, into the assembly. It is the uh, light of Christ. It is the light which is uh, which symbolizes Christ. And when you when you see the light brought into the assembly, you think about uh, about Christ who has uh, who has illumined those who sit in darkness, who has descended into who has come into the world as the light of the world, um, as the purpose and kind of meaning of the entire creation and the reason for which the human race, entire creation exists, and uh, came and accepted human nature and became. Um, and, and uh, accepted to the point of crucifixion and death, uh, and, uh, and, and and burial in the and burial in the tomb. Now it's it's uh, every point of the does every point of the service does not only have a um, meaning connected with its historical origin. It has a it's Christologically called it spiritual meaning. And rather, it's which intends to lead our contemplation to the mystery of Christ coming and to the expectation of Him coming again. We no longer celebrate the vigil throughout the entire night. We celebrate. We can say we celebrate some form of it. We celebrate. We uh, we have. We also sort of have an um, kind of image of that all night celebration, but. The uh, the purpose of our coming together is to contemplate the mystery of Christ's coming, Christ, uh, and especially if we come on Sundays, we contemplate the mystery of Christ's Pascha, uh, of of Christ's uh, death, burial, and uh, and resurrection, and that's why in the hymn the hymns are full of this 
uh, of, of this uh, are full of it, of this meaning and full of this of uh, um, are full of significance and full of the of full of theology. And I would uh, encourage everybody to uh, when you are in at vigil, uh, try to pay attention to the text. And if you have have not anything any text sort of strike you as interesting, you come back, come home and try to try to look at it. They are not you uh, it, uh, text of the of the vigil, especially can, canon and traparia and hymnography, especially if they are written by great writers such as St. John of Damascus and Theodore Studites and Cosmos and uh, Andrew of Crete, um, they are not very simple. They are, you have to uh, contemplate, you have to, to try to understand, uh, understand it because you, it also usually presupposes that you know scriptures very well, that you get uh, all the allusions to the scriptures, which they... Uh, um, and, uh, uh, but it, it's not that it, it, it's not that you will, from the Early point from the very beginning, you will from the immediate immediately get get all the meaning. But when you come to the to certain texts, especially a very good text, the genius texts, for uh, one again and again, you will get well, you will you will get more from it. It will bring you uh, will bring you more into contemplation of the mystery of Christ. This is what, what the vigil is about. Uh, do you have any questions? Sorry if I talk if I was talking talk for the moment. <laughs> Questions, uh, objections, uh, comments, uh, corrections. Yeah. How long have you been? Oh, well, I've been studying this for I would say like about ten years. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you have. Yeah, you have a variable. Of course, you have variable portions of the of uh, um, you. The variable portions is are what what called tihira or traparia is the hymns, uh, which are I mean uh, and the readings and uh, uh, these are these are these change in accordance with the sea, with the uh, day of the week and uh, the season of the year. And uh, the and calendar day. So this uh, and that's why I mean um, if you can show a bit further earlier, yeah, very much early. Uh, yeah. So stop. Yeah. Can go. Yeah. So you have those. Uh, you have several texts of uh, books, and such as Aktoich uh, uh, has the services for every day of the week. In the uh, in each of the eight tones, it's all divided into eight tones. You can think of this eight tones as a sort of, um, as you know, we often say about Sunday. And Sunday is the eighth day of the week, because it's both the seventh and the first. And you have uh, can perceive this idea of eight tones also as a projection of this uh, Siddhmitsa. It's a seven day, seven or actually eight day cycle to the to to the liturgical year. But it repeats several it repeats several times. Uh, so you use uh, this during uh, throughout the, the year. You use tri triod triodion, uh, either uh, Lenten or uh, Pentecost Pentecostarian uh, for uh, time of, of uh, uh, Le Lent and Pascha, um, and um, and you use uh, next slide. You use twelve volume mineon for every uh, kind of for every day of the year. Had a uh, ser had a service uh, for a specific saint has a service for a specific saint, and that's actually this this book which is still uh, living, which is still well, they all are living because they're used, uh, but they're still uh, kind of continue to grow, because you have services to the saints added all the time up until the present, 
and uh, even that collection probably would not be uh, does not contain all uh, the services for the science. You still can use probably can see use when you use booklets and uh, printouts. And um, but um, the um, uh, the reason for that is that we are celebrating uh, the mystery of Christ. And uh, every day, but with this respect to specific, with respect to specific day and specific occasion, and specific with respect to specific saint or the feast, and that, uh, and we um, are find ourselves in, in uh, as church find ourselves themselves in uh, in need of composing hymns, which, as I said, interpret uh, the scriptural text and interpret the mystery with respect to. Uh, this particular time and place where we find ourselves, and that's and from that the whole collection of uh, uh, variable hymnography grows. Mm. Yes. Could you go back and tell us when the people were? Yes. Yeah. Those, those people. Saints. Uh, Saint John of Damascus is probably uh, to him a uh, large portion of Octavius probably attributed. It's definitely a. a Probably Stichira or uh, Apostica. Uh, you know, uh, Apostica as we sing in, at the end of uh, the, at the end of Vespers. And if you uh, look at the Greek of those uh, texts, you see that the all of the Apostica, uh, well, like the sti not the first Stichira, but the Stichira, all of the Apostica are alphabetical. They all uh, uh, they are uh, uh, they are uh, you you can you have basically it's, uh, all of the Apostica from tone one to tone eight. Are, is a kind of uh, uh, after, uh, begin with a different with the in order of the Greek alphabet, and um, uh, and that's probably one of his contributions, and uh, also kind of uh, canons, uh, canon for Pascha, canon for um, uh, for uh, for nativity. I mean, there was also um, Saint Theodore the Studite is the probably he's the one who composed um, uh, uh, which I mentioned before, uh, like hymns of ascent, this uh, traparia to go with the sounds of ascent, uh, the uh, and uh, um, uh, those two last two are actually emperors. They show basically their contribution. One of them is Leo the Sixth. He he composed the what's it we call gospel stichiron. Gospel stichiron is at the end of uh, the end of uh, matins. We sing them. This basically repeats for us what the gospel, which we read earlier, what was what it what what what, what was it about? And similarly, and his son Constantine the Porphyrogenitus composed uh, uh, ex apostillaria. So it's there. You have some imperial contribution in this uh, in in our Actoicas. So it's a uh, very um, so these they were they were. Uh, uh, important uh, politicians, and uh, uh, and, and uh, they were important. Uh, well, in, in, in Byzantine Emperor is a sort of a sacred figure, but uh, well, Leo the Sixth had this uh, uh, had uh, um, un basic misfortune of having been excommunicated for um, having been married for for the fourth time. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, we still we use their contributions, and in the, uh, we acknowledge them as orthodox and uh, acceptable, and and they 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 are very um, useful in the uh, in the services. So, yes. Some parishes do sing Nina uh, Pushaish and Watch Safe for Lord. Watch Safe for Lord is uh, it's a, it's a part of basically Watch um, Safe for Lord is uh, uh, well, there's a question where you sing it or should you sing it or should you read it because if, is it a hymn or is it a prayer? I mean Watch Safe for Lord has a corresponding uh, prayer in the um, uh, at matins which uh, at daily matins. 
where it is part of the uh, of, of the taxology of the what, what only on the only poly, of the Palestinian tradition, and so I mean if it is uh, uh, I have seen it I have seen it sung I have seen it read I think in Jordan they read it unless I'm mistaken, and uh, um, uh, uh, I think in Greek tradition they tend 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 to read it I mean especially priest tends to read it. Or it's rather not a priest. These are parts of the services which are called, which are are in the monastic context. Uh, they are read by a specific by an um, uh, abbot or uh, kind of senior monastic. Um, so the, these are not. Uh, th these are still um, <laughs> parts of the services which are uh, um, kind of uh, special. Kind of they're not just the reader, on the same same as readers. Parts of the services, but they are um, so they are they are uh, uh, and they, as you will have uh, as many parishes you have, you will have a variety. You and it, it is an, a variety. In you will know it is good to be following the same standard. We can all follow, follow the same standard in different ways um, and in accordance with our specific local tradition. And all our variant of, of local variant of, of, of tradition, and this is um, unavoidable. And when it and it is it is uh, I mean there is a, I, I'm not saying that there is no such thing as a correct practice or incorrect practice, um, but I mean if it, if you if when you say this you, you're not being too judgmental, you just don't if you don't uh, pronounce judgment on other traditions, which maybe you don't know very much about, but why they're doing this, but you still uh, want, you still kind of um, uh, disapprove of it, but uh, it, there is a local tradition uh, in, there, there are Orthodox Christianity and Christianity in general developed as from the, from local churches, and so it is um, um, it is natural for us to have a small variation. So, I don't know if I answered your question. Okay.